Hey everybody, how we doing today? Windy, windy day here in the Florida Keys. So a perfect day to get caught up on some all about the bait chores. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the basic steps of pouring your own lead jigs. On my last lead pouring video, I walked you through all my different equipment as well as their prices. Uh, if you'd like to see that video, you can go to my main YouTube page, look under playlist, and there'll be a lead pouring catalog there with all have all the different videos in there uh, but today we're going to go through and actually put this stuff to use so let's get started okay to start with we're going to get our lead cooking uh, i'm going to be utilizing my lee pro 420 it's a 20 pound melting pot with a bottom spout uh, one of the things to remember is i leave about an inch worth of lead in the bottom after my last usage that solidifies and what that does is that's going to protect the nozzle from any contaminants while it's just sitting so i've already got some lead uh, pellets in there that i cut off from uh, my other jig heads and then we're going to take some of our uh, lead there and then place those this is all while it's cool so i don't have to worry about burning myself or lead splashing or any of those issues so I'm just going to fill that up, that, and then once it's all filled up, I can plug it in. And then I'm going to turn the uh, dial up to high. And now we just have to wait for that to cook. is finished melting so our next step we're gonna clean that lead or flux it as they call it uh, basically I use these lead ingots which have been priorly cleaned before they're poured into the ingots however there's still going to be um, uh, contaminants in this lead that I want to remove as well as a lot of contaminants from my last pour as well as the uh, oxidation that has occurred while it's been sitting um, the main purpose is we want to protect our nozzle from getting any contaminants or any blockages because what will happen is if that gets blocked you won't get a very good flow into your mold and then you'll either get uh, miss the fine detail portions of your mold or possibly it's going to harden too quickly because uh, it's not streaming quickly enough and then you're just going to get a very uneven pour so that's primarily what all this cleaning is about um, the agent I'm going to be using is basically just a candle wax. Um, there are aftermarket products just specifically for flexing. Uh, a lot of people use sawdust, uh, just a piece of paper. Basically what we're, we're going to be adding is a bonding agent. Uh, lead itself is very dense, so that'll tend to separate most objects right there, will tend to rise to the surface. Um, we want to remove that as well as any oxidation. Uh, this wax as it burns is going to create a crust and it's going to attract those and create something to bond to them and allow us to scoop them out easier. So uh, let's get to going. Uh, basically I've just got a, some candle wax and then I'm going to light the candle wax on fire. Um, you'll see it's going to start smoking right away but uh, eventually it'll burst into flames but basically I want to just kind of kick it off earlier so there's not as much smoke. So you can already see before I've done anything, you can see this oxidation has already occurred on the top surface. But also what I'm looking to do is to get down and deep to remove all that uh, crud and particles that are on the sides of this. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of mixing before we get started here. Now I've got some uh, wax particles. I'm gonna drop that in. Have my lighter ready, cause it's gonna start smoking. See how smoky it gets, and then if I light it, then that smoke goes away. Let it burn down a little bit. Now 
Uh, I could start going ahead and mixing up a bit here. I'm gonna try to get all that crud off and to the surface. Okay, then I can start skimming this off and getting it over to an area where I could scoop it out. And that's going to leave us a nice, clean, shimmery lead base to start pouring. So this is primarily our oxidation, the little bit of a contaminants in there and I could scoop that off leaving as much lead as possible And there we go now one step uh, especially if you have a brand new mold is to prep it um, and do what's called smoking the mold basically what you're looking to do is to add a, a layer of soot anywhere that the lead is going to pour and that's going to basically prevent it from sticking and help it to release when you're done uh, no different than spraying your frying pan with Pam or cooking spray and then cooking your eggs or whatever and they'll slide right off so all you're gonna basically do is get a candle, use the same candle that uh, I was using for uh, the fluxing, light it up, hold the mold, specifically the area that's gonna be where the lead is at, right above the flame. And you're just gonna run it over and you'll see that it starts turning black. So you just wanna make sure all the whole area is covered. And then you just have that nice soot layer there and that'll make pouring easier. Our next step where we're gonna wanna start heating up our molds, um, that'll help the lead not solidify as quickly. So we're gonna do it in a couple of different ways. Generally, while I was melting the lead, I always have these up on top. This element would basically circulate that heat through the aluminum molds, but I wanted to film it so I didn't do it. But uh, you can hook, heat it up by just leaving this during that whole process and that'll basically heat up. A uh, second way would be to not put hooks in it and just pour and fill these with lead a few times and that's going to quickly heat it up. And the third way which I do it is a combination of this and then I use my uh, a torch to basically heat it up as well. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and heat up our mold here. I've got my sears all for cooking but it works good for uh, heating stuff up. And we want to warm it up, but we don't want to melt this mold. It is only aluminum. It'll hold its form until you don't. And then when you don't, it just turns to liquid. So we're just going to heat it up really well. Okay, I think we're good to go there. Okay, we can test our flow here. Make sure that it's going good. Yep, flowing nicely. That's our lead there. Wait for it to solidify. There we go. So I think we're ready to go. Drop that back in and reuse it. Got our hooks 
all set up here in our mold. This guy's hot, so you gotta be very careful. Um, I'll be going through with specific videos on each of these particular molds, so that'll come later, but now I'm just gonna take our hooks and insert them into the mold. These are my 80 snagging hooks, the uh, Mullet Snagger 8000. And you want to verify that there's no space there, no gaps. Um, you can kind of jiggle the hooks and they, they should have a little bit of a flexibility. And then you know that's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean the spout. I basically use a paper clip on this vice grip. And I'm just going to insert that into the little nozzle down here just to make sure that it's clear and clean. Get a little bit of wax on it, doesn't hurt. There we go. All right, we're ready to start pouring. I went ahead and adjusted the uh, holder there. And that's so that the uh, mold can slide easily. So you can keep it nice and balanced there. So let's get pouring. All right, let's start pouring. I'm gonna get it up there underneath the nozzle. Feel it to the brim. Let it cool for a second. Put it over. Give it a little jiggle. Bam, there we go, done. Next one. Just like that. how we do it now on the subject of safety I got a few things here for one I'm doing it outside have a nice breeze passing through here uh, lead fumes are extremely toxic so you definitely don't want to be breathing it uh, added to that I've got my house fan that's kind of condensed concentrating the air away from me so I can make sure that I'm not inhaling it uh, on top of that for the heat part of it uh, I've got a pair of leather gloves to protect the hands uh, even when you just bump into stuff this is very hot so you want to have some general protection there uh, long sleeve shirt uh, just for splatter protection uh, it's just kind of very hot so you want a little bit of protection there um, what you can't see is I've got a couple of buckets of water sitting around here just in case something happens uh, you definitely do not want to add any water to the actual lead pot um, that'll actually cause it to just start splattering everywhere uh, think of it somewhat like uh, heated hot cooking oil. You just don't want to mess with that stuff, especially mixing water with it. Um, I do have a chemical fire extinguisher in my garden hose, so I'm pretty secure there. But definitely want to be careful. Don't take any risks and uh, yeah, be much happier that way. Okay, so that's the basic of pouring your own lead. Uh, hopefully you found that somewhat interesting. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, different people will do it for different reasons. Uh, some want to do it for financial reasons. It's a much cheaper than going to your local tackle shop. 
Uh, if you watch my last video about my general setup, I go over all the different prices for this. So you can kind of get a rough estimate if it's worthwhile for you to do that. Um, again, a lot of people are the DIYers and the craftsmanship uh, want to kind of build their own stuff to go fishing with and get more enjoyment out of doing that. Uh, some people are just want to know everything <laughs> about fishing, even the building of the lures or the rods or whatever, and just want to know all the technical aspects of doing it. So that's another reason why uh, I personally am doing it for production, for resale. Uh, I have a few items that I wanted to sell, but I just couldn't find them on the market very easily or it wasn't worthwhile for me to do it. Uh, like I've said, I, I do kind of high volume for a lot of products, so it's very difficult for me to go to some of these places and say, uh, I need a thousand of them when they're usually used to make me doing 10 or 20 or 100 or something like that. So uh, for a few of these things, I'm gonna go ahead and just do them myself. Uh, like I said, uh, a few batches and it's kind of paid for itself. So I definitely think it's worthwhile for me. But uh, anyways, I uh, hope you found that interested. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. And keep an eye out for more pouring videos when I'll go over tips and tricks and reviews of these individual molds. But uh, that was a come up later. All right, bye.